it up to LeBron to trump the NBA's top story of the day. This was the scene about 24 hours ago when Chris Stapps Porzingis and Luka Doncic hugged it out at halftime. And then after the game, when the Mavs took down the Knicks at Madison Square Garden, check out the tweet from Chris Stapps later this afternoon because little did we know then, or maybe even them, that about late afternoon today, Porzingis and Doncic would be teammates for the proof that there is no reality show quite like the NBA. So here's how the deal goes down. In addition to Porzingis, Courtney Lee, Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway Jr. will be going to Dallas. As for the Knicks, they received Dennis Smith Jr., DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, and two future first-round picks. After this trade, New York is projected to have more than $70 million in cap space this summer, according to our Bobby Marks. He'll explain that coming up a little bit later here on SportsCenter. But right now, though, let's get some Knicks reaction from the front office, starting with Steve Mill, the president. When Scott came on board with me, we started and laid out a plan that we strongly believe in. Today's trade will have a significant impact on us moving our team forward. Over time, it became clear to us that Chris Stops was not completely on board with the, the plan that we had laid out. He is a great player, but this morning in a meeting, he confirmed that he no longer wanted to be a Nick. Given the uncertainty of going into free agency with a player who feels that way, we decided to make this trade. It's just a feeling you get as you're watching how frequently he comes to practices, how long he's around the gym, different things that he's doing. And we just started to get a feel that this might be moving in a different direction. So those are the guys that pulled it off. This is the guy that broke the news. He's the NBA's best insider. He's with us tonight on SportsCenter. Earlier today, you reported there was a meeting between the Knicks and Porzingis. Hours later, you report there's a trade. So how did we get here so quickly? Yeah, there, there was a meeting this morning, a, a request for a trade by Chris Stapps, Porzingis. And, and, and like you heard Steve Mills say there, the Knicks saw this coming. Th this didn't just happen. Porzingis didn't just walk in the office and surprise them. This has been lingering from the Phil Jackson era. Uh, Steve Mills is uh, one constant in that front office, and Scott Perry's come in. But, but Chris Epps Porzingis feeling toward the organization hadn't changed. He was going to go into restricted free agency this summer. He could have signed a qualifying offer and become unrestricted next year. And the organization, once he told them he was ready to leave, well, then they, they were on the phone with Dallas pretty quickly. And, and Dallas was really aggressive and, and essentially telling the Knicks, don't get on the phone with anybody else. We'll get a deal done with you right now. And they did. And they were able to do it in a matter of hours. So it's a two-pronged approach for the Knicks. You have to make the move to clear the money. Now they've cleared the money. Our front office insider Bobby Marks will be here in a second to say exactly how they might be able to spend it. But how confident is the Knicks brass that they can acquire multiple big-time players this summer? Well, they certainly have the space now for two big free agents. And listen, they would love to get two. But it starts with one. And if they got one significant free agent, they could roll the money over to next year and then go back into it. But there's no question that Kevin Durant is the focus for this organization. And, you know, part of the aggressiveness they showed today to get that money off, you know, to move Porzingis out, was some level of confidence that they're going to be, you know, really competitive uh, in his recruitment come July. Never as a team that's lost 40 of their first 50 games of an NBA season generated this much buzz, but this is the New York Knicks. This is Woj. Hang tight. We're going to have you back in just a little bit, Adrian. And he'll be here to talk about Anthony Davis. The very latest as the NBA trade deadline approaches February 7th. What is Woj hearing? He's back to talk about that in just a bit here on SportsCenter. All right, Zoom, let's go back to the Dallas side of this deal because the Mavericks have been on the rise so far this season compared to last year, and Luka is the main reason. They already have 23 wins this season compared to 24 in all of 2017-2018. The Mavericks also have 18 home wins, already three more than they had last season. So as you imagine, the reaction all over the league. But what about some of the people involved, or at least some of the guys get new teammates, including Luka Doncic? Paul well, just caught me a little bit of surprise, but no, he's a he's an amazing player, so we're happy to have him. And you know, my relationship with with Dennis West and DeAndre is gonna keep on. I mean, they're such an amazing guy, so I'll miss them for sure. You talked to Porzingis last night at halftime. Were you guys talking about anything about this maybe happening? No. 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 What, what did you guys? It looked like you were laughing and having a good time. Um, yeah, um, I know him, so yeah, we did. Are you excited to have him as a teammate? Yeah, before? for sure, for sure. Like I say, he's such an amazing player, you know, and this could be a very really good, good thing. 
All right, Tim Legler here with us now. Tim, you look at this grouping with Porzingis and Doncic, two young guys with a lot of skill playing different position. Put them on the court, same team. How do you think it goes for Dallas? I think it goes very well. Complementary skill sets. I think this is exactly the kind of player that Chris Tapps Porzingis needs to be paired with. Right? Mm. So we saw him start to come into his own. 22 points a game he was averaging yeah. when he goes down. And he can get his own shot and create his own offense, but if you have a steady dose of that with Chris Tapps Porzingis as your best player having to manufacture his own offense, I think there's limitations on, on that team and on that player. And he can do some of these things, but I think over a period of 20, 25 possessions when he's your primary option, he's going to wind wear down. This is where I think Doncic makes him better. The delivery of the basketball in pick-and-roll settings and on dives and on slashes with his passing ability, it makes Porzingis a better player because he's going to be an elite finisher and he'll receive the basketball where he needs it. Luka Doncic right now at 19 years old is one of the best deliverers of the basketball in the NBA, whether that's off pick and roll, post entry, finding guys ahead on the break, whatever that may be. So if you now take some of that responsibility of creating offense yeah. out of his hands, he just becomes an infinitely better player. And I think you are now going to see Chris Tapps Porzingis when he finally gets on the court with Luka Doncic, you're going to see the very best version of who he is. Because as good as he was in New York, Mike, I don't think we've come close to seeing what that is. He needs a point guard that can manufacture the way that Doncic can and draw attention and find with that height and that vision. He will give him the basketball in some sweet spots. Yeah. I, think, I think actually it's, it's, it's a dream pairing for both of these guys. Great move by the, the Dallas Mavericks to get Porzingis. Former All-Star, Luka Doncic is probably going to win the Rookie of the Year, and you could have these guys together for the foreseeable future eight, ten years down the road there in Dallas. What a pairing indeed. Tim, appreciate it, brother. Thanks, Mike. So we've had Woj weigh in and Tim Legler. If you're wondering what Stephen A. Smith thinks of the deal, hang tight. I guarantee he'll bring a level of emotion and passion you rarely heard. And when I'm talking about Stephen A., that's actually saying something. And that's coming up here on Sports Center. He's on full blast as a hardcore Knicks fan. Hang tight for that. Mavs and Pistons, so obviously life begins without a ton of their lineup. Harrison Barnes, the only normal starter in there. All those guys are going to both cities. Fourth quarter, the one constant. Barnes got it. Mavs win tonight. They match their win total from last season. Under three minutes to go. Pistons down two. Drummond got it. His team's meeting for the second time in seven days. A little familiarity. 42 ticks to go. Griffin, who's having a great, great season. Looking, finding, hooking. Pistons up three. 14 ticks to go. Three-point game. Barnes for three to tie. No. Devin Harris. Rebound. Throws it to Brunson. And Griffin is going to intentionally foul Brunson. Mavs still down three. Putting a little pressure on the kid to hit some free throws. Made the first. Mavs down two. The college player of the year. Off the mark. Mavs had a great chance to grab the rebound. But if anybody's going to grab a rebound in this game, it's Mr. Rebound. Drummond comes out with it. Harris and Powell ran into each other. Ball bounces away into the hands of Drummond. Pistons win 93-89 on a new. Back to the NBA and battle for first in the East. Giannis and the Bucks, Kawhi and the Raptors. Kawhi averaged about 32 points a game this month at second best in the NBA. And Giannis went for 43 the last meeting between these two teams, which is one shot of his career high most ever in a loss, and he was trying to avenge that, something serious, and the Raptors D couldn't do much about it, just slicing through the defense, getting to the rim at will. Giannis, hero stepping, Greek stepping, whatever you want to call it, dude is long and can cover a lot of ground. He goes for 19 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Let's go to the third quarter. Giannis. Baseline past Kawhi. That was easy. And then later, Buck starting to blow him out. Eric Bledsoe pulls up from three, bottoms. It's a 22 point lead. One more possession after that. Bledsoe off the rim and DJ Wilson with the follow up jam. But the Raptors would mount a run. Pascal Siakam on the break with the finish. Later. Siakam now in the corner for three. That's good. And then the Raptors come back here. DeLon Wright, they're within 11. Let's go to the fourth quarter now. Siakam matched up against Giannis. Talk about some young talent in this league. Do not sleep on Pascal Siakam. What a player he's starting to become there. 
in the six. And here's the steal. Raptors transition. Reverse layup there. Siakam rebound. Cuts it to six. About five minutes to go. It's back to a 10-point advantage. Kawhi. Hits it to go off the glass. He finished with 16 points, but of 7 of 20 from the floor. And then here he drives. Cuts it to six. But the Bucks would not be denied on this night. Traveling north, Malcolm Brogdon hits a big there. They win it 105-92. The battle for the East won this night by Milwaukee. Possible Eastern Conference Finals preview. Nets Spurs in San Antonio. After this Nets turnover, we got a bat, several of them flying around the arena. And if you're thinking, I've seen that before, you would be correct. How? Trying to do everything he can, maybe wave a towel or something to get them out. <laughs> Not sure that's going to work. So you remember Hollywood 09? Ginobili swatting it right out of the air. This was so long ago. Duncan, Ginobili, Parker, and Bruce Bowen were on the Spurs. Back to Thursday night. Here comes the exterminator. They've had a decade to think about this since it happened in 09. Eventually, they dispersed. And we're playing basketball, by the way, with the Nets holding the road lead. We dropped this news at 8 a.m. on a Monday on purpose. It gives Magic basically the floor for the next 10 days with limited competition. If you guys really want me, y'all got between now and the trade deadline to make it happen. Well, really, Rich Paul and Anthony Davis now have all the leverage in the world to pick where they want to go. I mean, this could be the most consequential NBA trade since Kareem to the Lakers. All right, ESPN NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski back here with us on SportsCenter. People heard today that a seven-footer moved teams for the trade deadline. Most people thought it had been Anthony <laughs> Davis, not Chris Stapps Porzingis. Yeah. But with that being said, Woj, what impact does that Mavs-Knicks trade have on the Pelicans' attempt to move Anthony Davis? Uh, Michael, it, it created some enthusiasm around the Lakers because mm. what, what they want to see here are the Celtics get destabilized a little bit, okay. and, and they need Boston to be uh, a little – skeptical about how much they should perhaps invest in a trade for Anthony Davis. And, and the, the best case scenario for the Lakers is that Kyrie Irving becomes uncertain about his future mm -hmm. in Boston, and then Boston hesitates on pursuing Anthony Davis, and it gives the Lakers a window in. Uh, now that the Knicks have two max slots, uh, and you know, certainly they're going to pursue Kevin Durant, and, and you know their dream scenario in New York has always been Durant, Kyrie Irving, yep. and Kyrie's from Northern Jersey. Uh, but Boston has had no waiver at all from Kyrie Irving, and they've talked to him about it. Um, he has not at any point suggested that he's gone back at all about the commitment he made to stay okay. um, in the preseason. And so Boston's still full steam ahead, and when they get into the offseason, and, and assuming they get past the trade deadline and Anthony Davis is still in New Orleans, mm -hmm. you know, Boston's going to be committed to, to using you know, all their assets to go and get him and then in their minds, they hope that certainly solidifies the decision Irving made, and they go forward into the future with Kyrie Irving and potentially Anthony Davis. That's their hope in Boston. And, and, and the Lakers are hoping somehow they can still get in here and, and try to find a way to get a deal done. I know since you broke the news earlier about the Mavs-Knicks trade, you've been on the phone all day with both sides of this deal. And we talked earlier about putting Luka and Chris Stapps together on the floor. It makes perfect sense from a fit standpoint. But there's a deeper reason why the Mavericks were so interested in doing this deal from a culture standpoint. With Dirk Nowitzki still there for the end of the season, you get those three guys together. What is it about that mix that gives the Mavericks such a good feeling going forward? Yeah, I mean, th this organization has been built around a European player for the last, you know, 18, 19 years with Dirk. And Luka Doncic is, you know, literally picks up the torch and goes. And, and now Kristaps Porzingis, who, you know, is really a, uh, a modern, maybe a modern, more accelerated version of Dirk Nowitzki from yeah. where Dirk was, you know, as a, as a teenager. And uh, certainly he's got to get healthy, but uh, Chris Epps idolizes Dirk. I mean, that was his guy. And, and so I think his mindset's going to change pretty quickly here. He wants to be embraced. And I think that there were a lot of scars from the Phil Jackson era in New York for, uh, for Porzingis that he didn't, wasn't able to get past. And I think to, to enter an, an environment where they're enthusiastic, where they're dying to have some, some more star power there. Right. And he and Luca really do play off each other. Uh, I, I think he's going to have a good run in Dallas. Woj, always with the best knowledge inside the NBA. And, of course, you got the trade deadline coming up next week. I wonder how that's going to go, Woj. <laughs> we'll find out on Twitter and here on SportsCenter. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Mike. All right.
And four years after he was drafted fourth overall, the Chris Stapps Porzingis era in New York is over. The Knicks traded him to the Mavericks in a multiplayer deal, moved the teams to former All Star with rookie sensation Luka Doncic. Now, this move comes less than a day after Porzingis met with the Knicks front office and voiced his concern about the team's future direction. And all of a sudden, we get a trade. You know who was really interested in what happened in New York with this move? Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Don't even need to talk about what Dallas got out of this deal. It's Porzingis with Luka Doncic. That's what, that's the future. That's all they care about in the case of the New York Knicks. Yes, you got DeAndre Jordan. Yes, you got Wes Matthews. Yes, you got Dennis Smith Jr., who Phil Jackson should have drafted instead of Frank Nielakina, by the way. But that's neither here nor there. Here's the bottom line. You're the New York Knicks. You have cleared a minimum of 68 million dollars in cap space. That gives you enough room to go after not one, but two max players, and that's a minimum. They also got two future first-round picks in the mix, but that's beside the point. The two, the, the $68 million. Why is that so important, ladies and gentlemen? Because you got to get two stars. You got the Brooklyn Nets going after two. You got the Los Angeles Clippers potentially going after two. We know what the Lakers are going after, but now the New York Knicks are in the mix with Kyrie Irving, with Kevin Durant, and then some potentially available. I'm sorry, not even potential. Likely, we shall see what happens. The New York Knicks are in play. All right, so you knew Stephen A was going to have a reaction, but I mean, pretty much the entire league did. Check out Joel Embiid. I mean, he went LOL next level with that one. Um, CJ McCollum thought it was a good time to turn on notifications, and Bradley Bill was ready for the fireworks to come. And they certainly did as Porzingis, now a member of the Dallas Mavericks. And again, we still got the trade deadline next week. We got a lot going on. Uh, Knicks will have plenty of cap space in play this summer, as we mentioned. Talk about some of the highly coveted free agents. Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, DeMarcus Cousins, Kimball Walker, Kyrie Irving, and oh, if Kawhi Leonard opts out of his player option, which he's expected to do, he too would be a free agent. Zubin, I think I'm gonna need a vacation this summer to get away from the NBA. It's a lot to absorb right here. In other words, the Knicks are gonna have plenty of options. Bobby Marks spent plenty of years, 20 namely in NBA front offices, Take us through the dollars and cents of this offer, what the Knicks might be raring to do this coming summer. Well, this offer was all about cap saving for the summer of 2019. As, as you can see in that big green number right now, the, the deal to send Kristaps Porzingis, Courtney Lee, Tim Hardaway Jr. now has created $71 million in cap space for New York. That's good enough to get a, a max slot because here is where your roster is. You have all young players, Dennis Smith Jr., Kevin Knox, Frank Nittakina. Here is what we're looking at for free agency. The possibility of a player like Kyrie Irving, if we slide him in here, that leaves you with $39 million in, in room. You still have enough in cap space for a player like oh boy. Kevin Durant. <laughs> oh man. That slides you in there. And there are your two free agents. And basically what it does is you can go into July 1st and say, pick a teammate. Who do you want to come play with right now? Wow. That's a pretty good question for one of these guys to answer to perhaps bring the other one aboard. Bottom line, the Knicks have a relatively new president, GM, and coach. And if the triumvirate wants to swing for the fences this summer, they'll certainly be able to do it and have money to spare. Bobby, thank you. Seems only appropriate that the Knicks are already back in the spotlight. Part of the Friday double header. Celtics, Knicks at the Garden. They're all building around Kevin Knox for the moment. And then the newly minted All-Star Reserve, Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets host the Red Hot Houston Rockets with James Harden. It all starts the NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN, streaming live anywhere you go on the ESPN app. We mentioned the return of LeBron. He was upgraded to doubtful earlier in the day. The rumbling started. He is back at the Staples Center, though they're the opposition on this night. Taking on the Clippers, this is LeBron's first basket. No minutes restriction, by the way, on the King. He might go full board tonight. We're tied at